Good morning. I found this uh, old oak rocking chair in the trash, and today we're going to try to restore it. If you want to see that, stay tuned, because that's what we're going to do today. But if you don't care about uh, watching video, here it is, already finished. So you don't have to watch the video if you just want to see what it looks like. Good morning. Welcome to another Memphis Monday, Memphis Monday 401, 37th week of year eight. Um, today we got a restoration project, uh, an oak uh, rocking chair. I was, I was at the, uh, you know, the local trash place where you throw your trash away and in the bulk waste container they had uh, this oak rocking chair was peeking out and I went over and took a look at it I don't know if I was supposed to uh, uh, take it out of there but when the when the worker there kind of turned his back I reached up there and grabbed it and put it on my trailer trailer so I'm a law-breaking uh, felon I guess but anyway, I'm, it's pretty early in the morning because I'm pretty excited about doing a uh, restoration. I think the, you know, fence and decks and all that stuff are probably get more views, but uh, I like doing restorations, so it's all worth it. But nothing's worth it unless we get some work done. So let's knock off the chit chat and see what we got. Well, here it is. It's uh, very badly weathered, but it's, the joints are not loose. Uh, the, the chair itself is, you know, very rigid. The wood is very rough, like it's been, I mean, directly in the weather, like uh, got wet and stayed wet. Um, this looks like oak to me and I think what I'm going to do I got a seat slat here that's fallen out. What I'm going to do is I think I'm going to sand this down and see what kind of wood we got. I knocked the uh, paint off that uh, seat slat. Let me zoom in here and show you what we got. Here you can see <clears throat> what's known as, uh, well, it's known as a lot of things. Sometimes it's called rays uh, or ray fleck or f uh, flake. Sometimes called tiger oak or tiger eye and you find it in uh, both white and <clears throat> both white and red oak but it looks different in particularly old growth white oak I'll get some more <clears throat> some more hints later but it doesn't look like it's as old as I thought it was it's uh, it's got just regular Phillips head screws. Here's a shot of the screws that were holding the, sl the uh, seat slats. See how this is one that isn't uh, rusted real bad. But you can see these others. See how narrow they are at the top? Um, you know, the reason this is important is maybe the other metal fasteners in this thing are also rusted away and that'll make it easier to take apart. Here's our seat slats. Here's our test piece here. If we can get this thing apart, you know, I think it's gonna, it's quite a contrast to me. I 
Well, I got everything apart. What I'm doing now is uh, scraping and sanding the paint off. And I'm also smoothing the surface. I'm using 80 grit sandpaper because I have to smooth all the uh, components because they're so badly weathered. Here I got you zoomed in on some of the seat slats. Uh, you can see this kind of washboard. If I run my finger over it, you might hear it. You know, it it's it's like a washboard across there. Uh, you know, the, the grain, all the annual growth rings, the spring rings, have all weathered away, and the winter rings are still standing up. Here's that... that uh, piece we were looking at. <clears throat> Cleaning these uh, parts up is really a two-part process. First, got to get the paint off. Now I can scrape the paint off using the, uh, you know, just using the paint scraper. For the most part, That well, looks like my worries were for nothing. Because uh, everything kind of, everything turned out fine. Fairly smooth. Doing some hand sanding now. Some of my uh, stretchers I can put in the lathe to clean them up. But it's very difficult to get the centers on here, and so they, they're not exactly centered. And so the sanding doesn't work real good. I'll show you what happens. See what happens is that since this thing's not centered in there right, you get, you know, it's pretty good right in here. And then you get over here and on this side and you didn't get the paint. I got the, uh, I got the paint off of all of our parts, all 33 of them. It looks like it's uh, all white oak. I haven't had to replace anything yet. Now, interestingly, tells me this is perhaps a more than cheap uh, rocker. We got some steam bent parts. These seat slats are steam bent. These back curved back slats are steam bent. What they do is they take this oak and they put it in a steam chamber and get it real hot and then they bend it to where they want. And then really cool, these back legs, they got a slight curve to them right here, are bend. And so these are steam bent also. So we have three three parts that are steam bent. Well, I got some of the, some of the parts, uh, the seat slats. They don't. They're not gonna. I'm not gonna be using any glue. There's no joints for these. Um, so I went ahead and put some stain on. This is the first one we sanded as a sample to see what kind of wood we had, and see we had all this good, real nice figure. Let me zoom you in so you can see it. You probably see it from distance, but see we had this real nice figure, and so I was excited that perhaps the whole chair uh, had this had this figure in it. 
but nope, it doesn't. Uh, I know this kind of stuff, people's uh, eyes glaze over, so I'll just go to the, the most important thing first, and that is this rocker is put together with a press fit in the mortise and tendon joints. There's no glue. Uh, the wood is kiln dry. And then they have these big presses that press the uh, <clears throat> mortise and tendon joints together. And then they put a little brad in there, but they don't use any glue. Um, that's the reason I was having such a trouble getting the thing apart. Uh, <clears throat> you can stop the video here if you, if you need any of this information. The rocker we have is the Carolina Rocker. It's a 900 series. Um, it's made by the Troutman Chair Company of Troutman, North Carolina. This is the same outfit that makes the uh, famous Kennedy Rocker. These are the uh, vertical back, uh, back slats. Uh, they go they go in the back. There's uh, five of these. And what I'm doing now is just going through and sanding uh, all the parts. Uh, I've already sanded through 120 grit. And this is really going to be my last sanding. I'm just going to uh, take them down to 220. I'm not going to stain the thing until I get it together. And also, I'm not going to, uh, you know, I'm going to have to press fit these, but I am going to use glue. I'm going to use the kind of glue uh, they use in furniture making called hide glue, H-I-D-E, and we'll talk about that when we do it. I've been practicing my assembly skills, and it's nerve, it's nerve wracking. Um, but I think I figured out where all the different parts go. This is that hide glue that I was telling you about. This is uh, the kind of glue they uh, stick furniture together with. And you really need it when, you, when you're like... Uh, renovating antique and even just old furniture because they often use glue like this uh, during the assembly process particularly with, uh, with, with chairs because you need a lot of uh, assembly time. I'm just going to go for it. What I'm afraid of is that I'll, I'll glue the frame and everything together and then it won't fit on the uh, rockers. It was probably an assembly procedure that I don't know about for these things. And I'm about to find out. I got it all uh, glued together. Now in the factory, I suspect what they do is they press the back together and then they press the front together. And then they inserted the back into the uh, runners 
and the front end of the runners and they're splayed out and then they could uh, attach these stringers and press the whole thing together now I couldn't do that because when they pressed the back together and the front together uh, they obviously has, had jigs to keep it square uh, so that everything went together square so that when they pressed the two the front and back together the whole thing would line up in the uh, in the runners what I had to do you saw me flailing around there I had really had to assemble it all at one time uh, because to make sure it was square I had to make sure that all the all the different parts were lined up for it pressed it together but I'm turned into a big believer of, of that uh, hide glue because you can just wipe it off with water and you know it doesn't leave any residue and it sands off real easy it also gives you a 30 minute uh, uh, working window okay so next step is I'm gonna do some uh, I'm gonna do a little I'm gonna, I'm gonna let the, the glue dry make sure the glue is dry it's supposed to take you know an excess of 24 hours for the glue to fully dry and then I'll do some light sanding and put some finish on it and we'll be on a roll now I'm uh, putting some stain on it the uh, I'm using penetrating stain the color is golden oak I think this this particular chair was the wood was selected uh, as a painted chair I, th I think the thing was originally painted hunter green um, I don't think it was ever intended to be stained like this and the reason I say that is the wood is mostly plain sawn. The runners look like the rift cut. Uh, we only have three quarter sawn slats. These back slats are all plain sawn. The arms are plain sawn. Uh, this rail appears plain sawn. My point is that if uh, I think on their high dollar high dollar uh, stained versions of this chair, they're going to use um, they're going to use quarter sawn wood, but they didn't here, so. It doesn't look as uh, good as I had hoped, but hey, so far, this is how much money we've spent. Zero. This is what I'm talking about. In this, uh, this is the right, uh, the right rocker. You see that figure in the, uh, in the wood? Uh, this is rifts on here, uh, which means it's almost quarter sawn and you get this real nice figure and if you come over here to the to the left this is the left rocker you can see some of the figure right up in there see it so if the whole chair had that uh, tiger eye in it we'd uh, we'd be in good shape but instead we got all this see this this is plain what they call plain sawed right here so you, we're not getting any figure in it same with the uh, same with the legs there's the back 
Let's look at the back slides. You really see it in the back slides. See the how far far apart the growth rings are. So anyway, the wood didn't turn out as uh, as good as I hope, but I I still think it's going to look it's going to look good. I will go ahead and finish staining this and put some. I'm going to put spar urethane on it and and then we'll take a look at it well that does it for um, Memphis Monday 401 today we uh, did our oak rocking chair we were really excited that uh, we found that figured wood but Turns out it was just a couple of pieces figured. But it came out all right. It's a uh, Carolina a Rockers 900 series. Uh, all the joints are press fitted. Uh, since this is a, a uh, renovation, we went ahead and used some uh, hide glue. But overall, I'm satisfied with the uh, results. <coughs> All right, I guess that'll do it for uh, Memphis Monday 401. Uh, today we overhauled a Carolina Rocker 9000 series uh, made by the Troutman Share Company in Troutman, North Carolina. It's the same company that makes the famous uh, uh, Kennedy Rocker. But in any case, uh, you know, I told you I was going to uh, fix it up and give it to uh, charity. But my wife saw it, and she likes it better than the other rocker we have, and so we're going to keep it after all. We'll give the other rocker to charity. Uh, but anyway, I think we learned a lot. We learned about hide glue. I'm a big believer now. Uh, we learned about press fit. Uh, press fitted joints you know they actually uh, uh, you know uh, instead of using glue and nails and all that stuff they actually press those joints together uh, we noted that the thing wasn't even rocky uh, you know it was really tight when we first uh, looked at it but anyway I think it turned out all right it it I was a, a little more hopeful than I maybe should have been when I saw that uh, quarter sawn figure in that one slat because if the whole chair would have been that it would have been spectacular but can't always get everything you want huh all right like favorite share all stuff to you on the internet most important make sure you're back here next week for another exciting Memphis Monday thanks for playing along <laughs>